Hello guys, welcome back. In this video, we'll be discussing multiple approaches to find GCD of two numbers. Let me quickly take some input and output. If I just take the value 615, the output for these two numbers should be the value 3. So the easiest approach would be, let's take two numbers called num1 and num2. We'll be finding the minimum number among this, naming it as min1, num2. So now we'll be iterating from the range from the number two to the minimum one. So in this range, if we find any number which is divisible by num1 as well as num2 with the remainder zero, then we make that number to GCD. Else we make the GCD has to be the value one. So let's write that code here. Num1 would be the value given by the user int of input. Num2 would be the value the same given by the user end of input so now we make our gcd value to one and now we find the minimum value which is min of num1 comma num2 now we iterate from i in range starting from the value 2 until min1 so we need to add plus 1 here so we also need that minimum 1 to be included in that range so if you find any number which is perfectly divisible with i with the remainder zero. Similarly with num2 as well, then we make that number as a GCD. So GCD would be that i value. And once the loop is done, you put in the value of GCD. This is a very easiest approach. Before running the code, let me comment this input and output. All right, let me save the code. Let me run by giving some values. If I just give 6 and 15, the value is 3. If I give for 4 and 8, the value is 4. So we are getting the output as expected. The other approach, instead of using this for loop, we iterate from 2 to any of the given number which is small. But instead of iterating multiple times, let's write some other approach where we use a while loop. While num1 not equals to num2, if my number is greater than num2, I'll be decrementing the value of num2 from num1. So num2 minus would be num2 and else I'll be decrementing the value of num1 from num2. At last, if you observe, this while loop fails whenever num1 and num2 are equal. So at last, num1 and num2 would be the same. So you can print either num1 or you can print either num2 as well. Both the values are same. So this should be the output. Let me save the code and run. 6 and 15, the outputs are 3. And if I give 4 and 8, the output should be 4 and 4. Very easiest approach. If I just take the num1 as a value 6 and num2 as a value 15. So this both the numbers are not equal while condition satisfied. And if condition is failed, so you decrement the value of num1 from num2. So 15 minus 6, the value would be 9 here. Again, 6 and 9 are not equal. 6 is not greater than 9. So you decrement 6 from 9. So 9 minus 6 would be the value 3. So again, 6 and 3 are not equal, but 6 is greater than 3. So you decrement the value 3 from 6. So the num1 value would be 3 here. So 3 is not equal to 3. The condition got failed and you print the value of either num1 or num2 both the values are same so let me comment this step here let me save the code and run it works for any number if i just take 12 and 60 the greatest common divisor would be the value let me give those values in different lines yes the value is 12. so this is how these are the two different approaches for finding a gcd of two numbers this is a very easiest approach to remember as well Instead of going with these two approaches, there is other approach by using recursion. Let me discuss that as well. So similarly, let's first calculate. Let's take the input from the user. It's for m2 as well. Let's call a function. Let's take a print statement and call a function called GCD by passing two numbers called num1 and m2. Before that, let me write the function here. This could be a recursive call. So GCD, you pass two values called num1 and num2. If my num2 
is equal zero, then you can simply return the value of num one. If not, you return the value of GCD num two comma num one modulus num two. Let me save this code. Let me run this code. If I give the value thirty six and sixty, I need to get the output as twelve. Because twelve is a common factor for thirty six as well as sixty, which is twelve three is thirty six and twelve five sixty. Let me also give for six and fifteen. It works. So these are the multiple approaches for GCD using recursion. Let's see the step by step explanation for GCD. All right. Let's see step by step explanation for GCD by using recursion. So let me just take two numbers called six comma fifteen and let's try to find GCD dot six comma fifteen. Let's see this pseudo code again. I will return the value a if my b value is zero. If not, we return the value GCD of b comma a mod b. Now let's try to evaluate for GCD of six comma fifteen. Your b value is fifteen and a value is six. So if you check the first condition, fifteen is not equal zero. So this condition can be ignored. And now you return the value GCD of b. B is nothing but the value fifteen. A modulus b is nothing but six mod fifteen. So you return value GCD of fifteen comma six mod fifteen. When you evaluate six modulus fifteen, the remainder would be the value six. So you call the function GCD of 15 comma 6. So here, if you observe, a value is 15 and b value is 6. Again, b value is not equal to 0. So you return GCD of 6 comma 15 modulus 6. So a value is 6 and 15 modulus 6 would be the b value. So when you evaluate 15 modulus 6, the value would be 3. So again, here the b value is 3. Again, it is not equal to 0. So you return the value GCD of 3 comma 6 mod 3. So GCD of three comma six mod three would be GCD of three comma zero because six mod less three is the value zero. Here B value is zero and A value is three. And now if you check zero is equal to zero, as the condition is satisfied, now you return the value of A. So A value here is the value three. So you return the value three here. So now GCD of three comma zero is done. So you can ignore that function call. And if you observe GCD of six comma three is also written in the value three, so again the function is done. Next GCD of six fifteen comma six returns the value three, so again this function is also done. And now GCD of six comma fifteen returns the value three. At last, when you evaluate GCD of six comma fifteen, the return value is the value three. That's all for this video, guys. Thank you for watching. See you guys in the next one.